So using this plate of candy and also using these two empty bottles, label yellow and label blue, I'm going to explain base theorem in the very easiest way. The reason is because base theorem apply in almost every aspect of science, probability, mathematics, machine learning, data science, statistics, name it. So base theorem is something you need to understand provided you are a science or engineering student or you work in this field. So this will be really easy. Uh, I made it in such a way that no matter who you are, you can understand base theorem so easily. So let's get started and you'll see that it's very easy. One thing I'm making this video is because many people think that mathematics is difficult, but I'll use this to prove that it is not really as you think. It simply depends on who you learn it from and the approach you use to learn. So in learning Bayes' theorem, we are going to learn these things because we need some prerequisite knowledge before you understand Bayes' theorem. We are going to learn about marginal probability, the sum rule, joint probability, the product rule, conditional probability, and then Bayes' theorem. The way they are arranged is the way you need to learn them. You can't jump from one to the other. So the knowledge or the information flows uh, from the first one to the last one. Another thing I would like to, uh, I would like to say is that if this, if this video is informative for you, please share it around. I really want everybody to get to understand this topic. So please subscribe if you've not subscribed and also feel free to share it around and let me know if it's been okay or whether there's something you need me to do. So let's start with marginal probability. Marginal probability is simply something you already know. It's simply probability. So when you are told what is the probability of, know that we are talking about marginal probability. So in probability, this word marginal is always removed. So let's now illustrate. Let's take, for instance, I take the blue box. I take a white candy. I take a second white candy and take one red candy and place inside the blue box. So the question is, what is the probability that if I pick up a, a chocolate candy from this, from the blue, uh, uh, the blue bottle, it is going to be a red candy. We are talking about marginal probability here. So in this way, we are talking about something like this. Probability that the box or the candy, sorry, the candy is equal to red. So let's represent it in this way. And it's going to be number of red candies inside divided by total number of candies inside. So it's equal to one. Number of red candy is one and total number of candy is three. So it's equal to one over three. Now in this class, I'm not actually going to be using the figures to be solving equations. I'm going to simply lead you to how base theory is derived. So this is marginal probability. And also you can write it in short form. Probability of red is equal to one over three, right? Good. Now that takes us to the next item, and that is what is called the sum rule. The sum rule gives us a formula to find, marg uh, to find marginal probability, yes. The sum rule helps us to derive or, or deduce marginal probability. So let me give an example. I'm going to, we have two white uh, candies here and one red candy. Here I'm going to put two white candy as well as two red candy okay so now i'm going to now say ask a question what is the probability of taking a red candy right what is the probability of taking a red candy from these two boxes the probability of taking a red candy from these two boxes can either happen in one of two ways let's try them down the first way is that we take a blue box and take a red candy. Take note, we take a blue, a blue box, a blue uh, bottle and pick a red candy. That is one way. The second way is we take a yellow uh, bottle and take a red candy. So there's two ways. So the probability of taking a red candy, the marginal probability that it will be a red candy, given these two ways, is simply that we add up the two ways it can happen. So let's write it in the first way. 
let me take a bigger pen okay so in the first way number one we have the probability that the bottle let's say bottle is equal to b the bottle is blue okay and the candy is red the second way is that the probability that the bottle this time is yellow and the candy is red so these are the two ways only two ways we can choose a red candy given these two bottles and the candies inside Therefore, the overall probability of taking a red candy is a summation of these two probabilities. So we can simply say probability, this time we are talking of marginal probability of the candy being red is a summation of these two, which is probability that the box or the bottle is blue and the candy is red plus the probability that the box is yellow and the candy is red. Try to understand what is happening here. I'm uh, saying that there are only two ways you can get a red candy. One, take a blue box, take a red candy from inside. And the second way, take a yellow box and take a red candy. Both of them cannot happen simultaneously. It can either happen in these two ways. Therefore, the marginal probability or overall probability of having a red candy is summation of these two ways it can happen and that gives you the sum rule so if you are going to write it in using variables you can just say probability of red equals probability of blue red plus probability of yellow right so you sum up all the joint probabilities of being right so the marginal probability is gotten by summing up all the joint probabilities now we are talking about a new term joint probability and that is what takes us to the next step but before i go to the next step i'm going to write out the actual formula for this uh, the sum rule which is probability of x is equal to so basically this should be p is equal to probability of x and y so we sum up all the probability of joint probability of x and y right so basically this is also the same as make no mistake about it is the same as y and x so joint probability is symmetrical so take note of this word because we are going to use it later on symmetry symmetry so i think it's double m so we are going to use it later on when we get close to base theorem so this is how the sum rule works now the question is how do we find joint probability we find the joint probability using the product rule and that brings us to the next step joint probability Okay, we've discussed it, but now let's now illustrate it using the bottle and the candy. Joint probability is the probability of two things happening, though not simultaneously. Let's take, for example, the probability that we selected a blue box and selected a red candy. Or the probability that we selected a blue box and selected a white candy. So note that these are two things. The first one, we selected a blue box. On the second one, we selected a red candy. What is the probability that these two things actually happen? Not that, what is the probability that we selected a yellow box and, and a red candy? This time, is specifying clearly that the box must be blue and the candy must be red. So in this case, we are talking about joint probability, the probability that these two things have to happen. So if we are going to write it out, the joint probability is written in this way probability that the box is blue and you see the, the comma I put there and the candy is red or in case of 
Probability that the box is yellow and the candy is right. Probability that the box is yellow and the candy is equal to right. So in joint probability, two probabilities are put in one place. So you have to find the probability that these two things actually happened. So we can find joint probability using the product rule. So let's recap what we've learned so far. We've learned of marginal probability, that is the overall probability that something happens. And we can find marginal probability by using the sum rule to sum up all the joint probabilities. And now we are saying that probability, the joint probability is, is the probability that two things happen, maybe they happen consecutively. And now we are saying that we can find joint probability using the product rule. Let's now move to the product rule. So how does the product rule work? I'm going to state the, the formula and then we discuss it from there. So the product rule says that the joint probability of X and Y is equal to the conditional probability of X given Y times the marginal probability of Y. Don't worry, let's explain it. So we are saying that the joint probability will be that the probability that this box is blue and the probability that the candy is red. Two things, the box is blue and the candy is red. Okay. So for us to be able to get it, we need to know one of these probabilities ahead of time. To know this one, one of these probabilities that ahead of time, it has to be the, the first probability before the second one. And the first probability is the probability that the box is blue. Therefore, if I write it out, the probability that the candy is red, given that the box is blue, is called conditional probability. So probability that the candy is red, given that the box is blue. All right, so let's write it. Probability that the, the candy is equal to red and the box is equal to blue. This is con uh, uh, joint probability is equal to the conditional probability that the candy is, uh, the candy is red given that the box is already blue. So we already have the box is blue and the candy is red. So we have B is equal to blue times the probability that the box is equal to blue. Now we can't prove it exactly beyond this place because it's a rule, it's a product rule. So it means that for us to get the joint probability of two things, we need first the conditional probability, the initial probability that something happened, and then the second probability given that the first event happened. So in this case, we are saying that the joint probability that the candy is red and the box is blue, we need to know the, calculate the conditional probability that the candy is red, given that the box is blue, and then we multiply by the marginal probability that the box is blue. If this is a bit confusing, try to will take some time to go through it, it's quite clear. So I'm going to write it one more time so that it becomes a little clearer to you. Red, blue, is equal to probability of red given blue times the probability of blue. So see how it flows, red, blue, red, blue, and then blue. So which is the same thing as probability of X and Y joint is equal to probability of X given Y times the probability of Y, right? So take note that comma in between two terms means joints and a bar means conditional. So you read it as given that. So when you see a bar, you read it as given that. So 
So here we have the joint probability of x and y equals the probability of x given y, or yeah, given y times the probability of y. The question now is how then do we find the conditional probability? Now, if I scroll up, you see that we have the sum rule gives us the marginal probability, the product rule gives us the joint probability, but how then do we find the conditional probability? And that is where Bayes' theory comes in. But don't worry, Bayes' theory is simply the product rule written in another way. So let's write the product rule. Okay, conditional probability, which is what we've mentioned. So conditional probability, I've explained it as probability of x given y, right? So this is what Bayes' theorem helps us to find. So let's recall something that is going to be very useful. Recall that in the product rule, we use the product rule to find to find a uh, joint probability in this way, the joint probability of x and y equals the conditional probability of x given y times the marginal probability of y, right? We have a rule called symmetry. Symmetry simply says that P of x given y is the same as P of y given x. Not given, P of x and y is the same as P of y and x. Which is the same as, if you write this one, we have simply interchange what is there. We have P of y given x times what? P of x, right? Okay, so let's carry over this to the next, to the next slide. Now, I'm going to write exactly what I've been writing before. The product rule says that P of x and y is equal to P of x given y times the P of y, which is the same as the P of y given x is equal to P of y. P of y, y and x is equal is the same as P of x and y. P of y given x times the P of x. So these two quantities are the same, exactly the same, no difference. Now, if we equate them, if we equate the two right hand sides, what we have is P of x given y times P of y equal to P of y given x times the p of x, right? So this is what we already have is a product rule. So simply divide both sides by p of y. So we have p of x given y equals, you simply move this one to the denominator. We have p of y given x times the p of x divided by the p of y. Okay, so what do we have? What we have, what we have is what we've been looking for, and this is called Bayes' theory. So this is how it goes, and I would like to say. Uh, Try to rewind the video, try to pause in between and understand how we flow along the line. And just a quick recap, let's just uh, review everything we've discussed. Because you can understand Bayes' theorem if you flow on it from 1 to 6. Marginal probability is the overall probability. The sum rule helps you to find marginal probability because the sum rule says that the marginal probability is equal to sum of joint all the joint probabilities. The joint probability, on the other hand, is a probability of two things happening, which is written as p of x comma y. So if you are writing joint probability, you use the comma and you have two items. Marginal probability is only one single item. The product rule helps us find the joint probability. 
So the product rule simply says that the joint probability of x and y is equal to the conditional probability of x given y times the, the, the marginal probability of y. We use the rule of symmetry to rewrite the product rule and then we are able to uh, rewrite it and be able to come out with base theory. I'm going to stop here and I would like to thank you for viewing. Remember, share this video around to everyone on your social network. And I'll say if this has been informative for you, leave a comment for me. I like this video and we'll see you in the next class.